Hi, I'm Dave Boyd with the Potter Shop Hollow Tree Farm and Portable Sawmill Service. And this video is about how to set your sawmill up. Now, maybe you've just built your sawmill and you're getting ready to run it for the first time. Or maybe you've been running it for a while and you just kind of need to review some of the basics on how to keep it running perfectly straight. Uh, either way, this will give you some tips and some ideas, uh, not only for this sawmill, but other different types as well. So uh, we'll start out with leveling the track and talk about blade guides, getting the blades straight so that it cuts perfectly square cants, and uh, just in general, doing what it takes to uh, cut straight square boards and be consistent with them. And if you have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll get back with answers as quick as I can. And a lot of different people have different ways of doing things. What works for me might not work for everybody, but uh, at least it's a place to start. So let's start out with the basics, leveling the sawmill. Well, it's always good to make sure that your sawmill is set up level. Now on a portable sawmill, you're going to be taking it down, setting it back up again. It's going to be knocked around a little bit with logs from time to time. And even a stationary mill is going to get bumped around. And either way, it's a good idea to check it, make sure that everything is in a straight, flat plane. So first thing we're going to do is level it front to back. And then we're going to level it side to side, make sure there's no twist to it. And once we've done that, we know that we're going to be cutting our logs in a flat plane. The other thing that that does is to give us a reference so that when we're setting our backstops and setting our blade, and we'll get to all that later, the level gives us a really good way to do that because if the track is level, the bunks are level, then as long as the blade is level, it's going to be cutting true. So we'll start out front to back. And then we'll do across the bunks in a couple of places just to make sure there's no twist. We're not going to be making airplane propellers today, so we want nice straight cuts. And that's all there is to it. Just took a few minutes and it can really make a difference in the quality of your lumber. Some mills have welded fixed backstops. Uh, this particular mill has an adjustable one, which you can, there's an adjustment down here to, to level it. And some people use to adjust that, to calibrate it, they'll use a carpenter's square, which works fine. Personally, what I like to do, since I know that the mill is level, is to put a carpenter's level on it. All right, so as you, as you can see, that bubble is a little bit off center there, way off center. So we're in need of some serious adjustments. We're gonna loosen up our lock nut here. And adjust our set screw until our bubble is perfectly level. Put the level back on it, push against it like there was a log rolling on it, and you can see that bubble is centered, so we've got it exactly where we want it to be. That'll give us perfectly square cans. Very carefully, lock it back down again. When you set your tracking, you want to make sure you have your blade up to full tension. There are some mills, and this is the HD36 is one of them, that as you change your tension, it's going to change your tracking a little bit. So you can't do it with a loose blade. We need to torque this thing down, and we'll get that to about the tension recommended by the manufacturer. Uh, on this mill, we've got the, the tracking screw right here. By the way, you've got tracking on both band wheels. So I'm going to just show you for one, but you need to get them both to be the same. 
What I'm looking for is to have the body of the blade, in other words, the part between the bottom of the gullet and the back side of the band, are pretty well centered on the pulley. And you need to do that, of course, on both sides. And if you do that, it should ride pretty level. Here's a trick I use to make sure that the blade is cutting perfectly straight through the wood. Now, it's a level, bubble level, that's been glued to a magnet. And assuming that the sawmill is level, and of course we've already checked that out, if that blade is level, it should cut straight through our piece of wood. And let's try and set the tracking back a little bit, and let's see what happens. So what having it tracking too far back does, you see the back side of the blade is high. That means the blade's tipping downward and it's going to try to dive into your cuts. And now we'll go the other way, set the tracking forward, and see what happens when the tracking is too far forward on the blade. Now I've got that blade riding well forward of where it ought to be. And among other things, you're going to run the risk of it coming off the band wheel. And that's not a really good thing. Uh, it can cause the blade to kink up. It can break the blade. All kinds of nasty stuff can happen. So let's put our level on. And if I have it figured right, that should tip the blade upward. Now you can see the bubble is forward, the blade is tipped upward at the teeth, and it's going to try and climb out of the cuts, and that's not a good thing either. Now we'll try to hit the happy medium, kind of get halfway between the two, and get that blade centered on the band wheel, and make sure that it's running straight and true. Put our level back on here. And we're riding right about where we want to be. So the blade is level. Of course, the track is level. So that means the blade has to be parallel to the track. And uh, we're ready to put it back together and start cutting some straight lumber. The Norwood HD36 uses ceramic guides. Uh, no moving parts, which is good news. And if you get everything adjusted right, they do a good job of holding the blade straight. You, you hear that scritching sound. That, that means the guide is a little bit out of adjustment. And you want to check for that every time you change a blade. You won't necessarily, you won't necessarily need to adjust it if it's running free, but in this case you can hear it. So we're going to first adjust the top and bottom guides and then the one behind the blade which is probably the one that's making the noise. Okay, so again, the process, we're going to loosen the top one. Maybe you saw that blade pop up just a little bit because we readjusted it. Now I'm going to loosen the bottom one. Put in our paper shim. And just push that guide up against the blade, not hard enough to deflect it, just enough so it's snug while we snug that down. Pull our shim out. Okay, got the top one. Push up a little bit. Snug it so it stays put, just for right now. Then we can put our shim in. Loosen our top guide. And just pinch it together. Ba basically, we're just going to let gravity hold that against the piece of paper. Doesn't, uh, doesn't take much. 
tighten that down just snug pull out our shim and if we did it right it'll slide right through without touching either one so and you can feel just a little bit of movement up and down so if the blade starts to deflect the guide will hold it that's all you want you got a set screw back here and all you do is just loosen that set screw and I'll slide that that guide forward until it just touches the blade and then bring it back oh, about an eighth of an inch is all it needs retighten the set screw give her one last spin hear that nothing to hear because everything is perfectly aligned and it's set exactly the way it needs to be if the blade isn't quite parallel to these guides uh, that's a good time to stop and adjust that what will happen sometimes is you bump it with a log you can hit it hard enough to throw that out of adjustment and it's twisted and all, we have, all you do is just loosen it so you want it so it's perfectly square or parallel to the blade and then use our allen wrench there's a hole in the side right here as leverage to keep it from twisting on us while we tighten it down there we go too thick here which means we need to raise this side of the saw head up of course if there's any question about it being square you can always take a carpenter's square put it on this to check it out and uh, you can see quite a bit of daylight we're looking at a good quarter inch up here so we definitely need to uh, do some adjustment on this Okay, so we're going to measure from the top of the bunk to the bottom of the blade and we're going to look for the tooth that's bent down a little bit uh, to accommodate for the kerf. So we're looking at 2 and 15 sixteenths on this side. And 2 and 13 sixteenths on the other side. We need to raise this end of the sawmill up by an eighth of an inch. So measuring again, let's see how we did. We are right at 2 and 15 sixteenths. And on the other side, we're at 2 and 15 sixteenths. So you're not going to get much closer than that. So if you get it right on the money, you'll cut straight square boards. While this mill uses ceramic guides, most mills use rollers and they actually work very much the same way. The difference is the roller guides put a downward pressure on that blade. So to adjust that side to side what you're going to want to do is lift both roller guides up off the blade and snug them down so they're not touching the blade. Then make whatever adjustment you need side to side to get the blade perfectly parallel to the cross bunks just like we did before with the ceramic guides. Once you've done that, drop those roller guides down to where they're touching the blade. Again, snug them down to hold them in place and pull some slack in the blade. Loosen the blade so that it's got some slack in it and drop each roller guide down by an eighth to a quarter of an inch. That depends on what the manufacturer calls for and do the same on both sides. Ideally, you'll drop them down exactly the same amount 
snug them down, then retension your blade. Make one final measurement to make sure that we're parallel to the cross bunks and you'll be good to go. <clears throat> now that we've modified our blade height, we want it to match our scale. And our scale's measuring three, so I'm going to drop it down so it matches the tape measure reading. And then I'm going to raise it up to exactly three inches and go back and remeasure. So we're dead on on the right hand side, right at three inches, dead on on the left side. Perfect, we're good to go, and now we'll start cutting square lumber again. Well, let's see if this helped us out any. We'll put our carpenter square back on it. And you see we're absolutely flush across the top, flush on the side. We now have a square cam. Just to make sure we have it where we think we do, we're going to try the same thing again. Flip it halfway around, 180 degrees, and remeasure. And this time it should be perfectly even on both edges of the board. inch and an eighth on this side and an inch and an eighth here so we got it it's dialed in and we're ready to get back to work log in the world. We've got some knots here, a uh, spike knot, and everything that could make a sawmill cut crooked and curved, this, saw, this log has it. But with everything dialed in the way it should be, there's maybe a 64th of an inch variance at the most between the straight edge and the cant. And that tells us we're doing something right. So the moral of the story is don't fight the sawmill. You're going to lose every time and the mill loses too because it puts more wear and tear on the equipment as well as on you. But when everything is just spot on, it's tweaked and everything's calibrated just right, it's a joy. I, I love running the sawmill. I love seeing the lumber that comes off of it. Good exercise, fresh air, a uh, little sawdust in your face now and then. but. That's part of it too.